Hello. Hiya. My name's Jim. Hi, Jim. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm DJ Lipper. DJ Lipper. DJ Lipper. Um, Local, are you? Yeah, well, not, not for London, but I've been coming down to these events for three years. Um, an event organiser. Um, and I've been organising protests around the country, talking about the effects of gender identity on women, um, LGB rights and children's rights. Um, so yeah, it's just fabulous to see this event. It's been going for three years to see how much, how much it's grown and how many different people are coming down to learn a little bit more about what's happening with women's rights and transgender demands. You made mention of um, children safeguarding yeah, issues. Yeah. Do you know exactly how much this is, in, how deep this is ingrained and embedded in school and the curriculum? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is part of the LGBT curriculum that they're bringing in, and it's it's compulsory. Yep. You're not allowed to take your kids out, no. but you're also not allowed to see the school resources. And a lot you're not of allowed to see the you're school. not allowed to see the school resources. They call it copyright, but a lot of these resources, they 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 they've got really dodgy material. There was one that had a, a thing called the dice game, and it's like you make a dice and you roll it, and it's like anal, and then a part of the body and this is going out to 12 and 13 year old children and um, they've been caught out on it and basically say it's copyright because these are private companies coming into the schools their argument is we can't show you the resources somebody's going to steal it and steal our work but basically they're just grooming children into uh, queer theory they're breaking down boundaries um, and aside from all the sexualized content, they're teaching them deeply problematic and false, false things about human biology as fact. So they treat, they're teaching them that uh, man and woman is a, is like a social construct, and your gender identity is biological. And um, they're teaching them that men can be lesbians, that women can with vaginas can be gay men. Um, and in general, they're just indoctrinating them, and they're not having a choice whether or not they can stay there or leave. They're being told that if they challenge anything in the lesson. Um, that that would be a disciplinary matter and it's very serious, it's as serious as making a racist comment um, or homophobic right. comment um, and it's basically just making it so uh, the kids don't really know what's up and down, uh, they don't know what a man and woman is and I think it's really bad conditioning going forward for teaching them about the world, what else are they going to believe, they can believe any old nonsense if they can teach them that men are women, like that's it. What age does this, does this indoctrination start? Do you well know? I'm not sure but the resources I've seen have been looking at um, 12 and 12 and 13 up so it's too young they really need to have good sex and sex and relationships curriculum especially for young girls teaching them about things like their boundaries how to have you know healthy relationships how to avoid abusive relationships how to say no um, to boys advances and things like this and also good sex education advice about stds and the birds and the bees really um, but this is not what this is about. This is a totally different thing under the guise of inclusion and tolerance. They're actually teaching them a really highly contested anti-woman, anti-gay, uh, anti-reality ideology. Fundamentally, this comes down to whose responsibility is it to teach children about yeah. relationships? Well, yeah, I mean, this is a big thing. It's um, the state have sort of intervened over many years and we've got to this point now where parents are almost seen as an impediment to, to, the, they're, to they're their... They're abusers, they're, they're, call it, they're trying to call them abusive yeah, parents. Yeah. If, you, if you speak out against a child... Yeah. Yeah, they have a rule. A lot of schools will um, socially transition your child behind your back, this is what and there's an attitude. The lady, there's an attitude that um, the parents don't know best. The parents are going to be bigoted. The assumption is that the parents an abuser. Now there might be cases where they, you do have an abusive parent, right. but surely the social services should be aware of that. Um, but the assumption is just that we know best. I feel like there's a real like middle class do goody element to it, where there's a culture of people who believe that they're morally right, and that the rest of us are just ignorant poor like people who don't know anything and it really reminds me a lot of what happened with indigenous people how they had uh, people coming into their communities and teaching them that they were raising their children wrong taking their children off them forcing other people's views into, into them um, and taking away all their all their own natural culture and we're almost becoming now like an indigenous people working people generally people are having this this really really strange ideology pushed on us and we're told if we don't conform that we're like unpersoned we're nazis we're bigots um, and that we don't deserve to have any rights and we don't deserve to have rights over our children and when the state starts to behave that way and the state starts to take ownership of your children I feel like it's a really slippery slope and it could be really dangerous. Sounds a lot, it doesn't sound very dissimilar from communism. Well, I don't know if it's communism or not. I mean, we could be here all day arguing about it. I see a lot of it as quite a right-wing thing, a quite a right-wing ideology. Right -wing? I do think it is, yeah. I think it's teaching people well, that... Well, hang on, hang on. Sorry to interrupt, but I've got to pull yeah. you up on this. So, leaving the experts, yeah. leaving it all... I do beg your pardon, sorry about that. 
Right, so I was saying, I was trying to make a point that I see it as communist yeah. in, in so much that they're removing the rights from the parents yeah. and then saying, you're not expert enough yeah. to understand about this. And to me, that just sounds yeah. like removal of private property yeah, yeah, yeah. and then also it sounds like leaving it all up to the experts. I think, I think there's an element to that, but what I find quite interesting about this is that um, although it addresses itself up as the social justice movement, mm. um, it's actually funded by big books, big mega books, billionaires, the George Soros Open Open uh, is it Open Democracy Foundation, yeah, but he's not far and BlackRock, right. the, e the ESG, yeah. the ESG, um, yeah. uh, what is it, environmental social governance. Yes. Uh, they're using this to embed these values, corporations are using it to embed these values. And last time I checked, like the corporations of the world, the big, the big asset investment firms, they're not communist. They're all open. So they're all no. open society. George Soros funds all open society. He's getting all the immigration yeah. over here. They're all left wing. Yeah. Open, so but, open borders. But he's a big capitalist, isn't he? So yeah, I don't see yeah, how yeah. he can be. You can Champagne identify as a socialist. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but there's, there's, a, there's another whole reason behind that as well. Yeah. But that is that is what's going on. These these people. It is a lift. It's a lift. Well, well yeah, I mean, it's Martin Rothblatt, like a communist, is, you know, like well, these people, these people who are big, mega rich, like they've been titled, they've had born with a silver spoon in the mouth. Jennifer Pritzker is also another person who funds this. John Stryker. There is big money to be made from um, the medicalization of puberty, um, a whole scale industrial reimagining of society. Um, and I do think that sometimes we can get bogged down into is it communism? Is it capitalism? At the end of the it, day, no, it it's something different. I do think you might. I think there's a weird confluence a now of hybrid thing. between capitalism and communism. It's totalitarianism, communism. isn't it? Yeah, it's like corporate fascism. Yeah. You know, it's removing free markets, but still keeping us as like, well, turning us into data commodities, basically. Yeah. Um, and it's really difficult because sometimes when you say one thing, then it's a debate about left versus right. And, and that's really, all bollocks. We're all in it together. 100%. We're all in it together. 100%. Um, we're all going to be totally de-invested of our rights, our rights to exist, our rights to have a family, to be lived unimpeded by the state, by, by these corporations so um, yeah whatever it is it's a mad new future that we're coming into it's a brave new world Amen. and this is why the events like this are great because we need to realize that we're all on the same page even though we're very very different you've got communists here you've got Muslims here you've got like um, you know every single ideology under the sun people come here and we're all united under the same belief that men aren't women and gender identity is harmful to society what about this one though just one last one Normal men don't yeah. think or want to be women. Generally speaking, these ain't normal men. Yeah. yeah. Right, they're men with mental health issues. Well, yeah, but I mean, they're still men though, and I think this really plays into something. What's happening, what, one thing I think is getting left off the hook is pornography. Yeah. The influence of pornography on right. all of this. Yeah. Because it's not just about transgender, there's a lot of other paraphilias that are being normalized. Right, right, right. Things like adult babies, yeah. um, things that like, no one really wants to see. Yes. And um, I know most men aren't getting into it, but I do think porn drives it. I think men are getting so desensitized with like normal porn. They start looking for something a bit more, and then before you know it, it's escalated. I make you right. You know, and there's like I don't know if you've ever looked into sissy porn and hypno sissy porn. No. That is a dark alley to go down. But basically, there's this genre of porn that hip uses like hypnotherapy techniques to hypnotise men into thinking they're women. And if you start watching it, eventually you get, get reprogrammed. We get reprogrammed, um, and yeah, it turns you're a tranny. Trans. Like, Google it, I'm not, it sounds like mad. <laughs> the problem with this debate is so much happens and it sounds Mental, crazy. Yeah. And then when you say it, people think you're mad. Yeah, no. But you're like, no, Google it. Yeah, it's no, true. I believe you, I believe it's you. True. So, you know, I think this is another element of it that we don't talk often enough about is pornography. It's, um, it's destructive to society, to families, um, to men and to women. Women, women most, most at the centre because you know we're the ones who Big dehumanise. Well, we dehumanise this disgusting. Like most porn, you watch that, like you, you wouldn't treat a woman like that. Nobody, no woman wants to have, no woman wants to do that. But we're just having it rammed down our folk. Children don't know any better. It's a big driver for girls dis uh, disidentifying as women because they see it as a, a porn category. They see how women are treated in the puberty, and then they're literally they're terrified of growing up and having to have yeah, sex. Yeah, right. And I can't blame them because look at the world around them. Do you know what I mean? Like there's an international war on women. You got women in Iran standing up for their rights at the forefront of it. You got women in New Zealand. Um, Posey Parker went over there and was mobbed, nearly killed, nearly stampeded to death. Everywhere you look, 
it's the same thing and I think it comes back to the same agenda at the top, it's to break down social cohesion, to break down the family unit, um, to break down reality. Well, <laughs> we'll be here all day, but, but I think they really they want to break down reality and take us into a transhumanist future. Oh, you know, you know. Up for grand, everything's Augmentation up for grabs. and all that. Yeah, Before, man, yeah. massively, massively. Conspiracy so, nut. Well, that's the thing, in it. Well, we're just six, ahead, six, six months ahead of the curve, aren't we? The thing is, I'm called mad, and there's a couple, there's a fellow over there, deaf like that. He's got this massive thing over his face. I'm like, we're the, we're the, we're, the, we're What is that? And society Georgie. as the rebels. Turn around. As the rebels and, you know, like the, the freaks and whatever. But like, what at the end of the that? day, we just believe things that everyone believed five years ago. Is that, is that your local? Uh, that's, that's some trans right activists yeah, who the, came the to protest. Right, right, But right. there's only two of them, so they're not as gobby as they usually are. You know right. what I mean? They're not as aggressive as they usually are. Makes but again, sense. like, this is what we're up against. This is normal and we're all freaks and this is the future. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, it's a total inversion of reality. Not if we can help it, though. Well, I think we'll get there, but like, I, I don't know. Like, there was so much wrong with the world before this happened that we were all fighting for different rights, and I now we've got to fight with all this bullshit. I think we like, we can get we can get some sort of unity and cohesion going on yeah, over yeah. over the children and the fact that it's not just an attack on women. Mm -hmm. If you look, at, we know what the WEF are up to. Yeah. We know what the the bigger agenda is. It's anti-human yeah, fundamentally. Yeah, 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 yeah. The CO2 that they want, the carbon that they want rid of is us. It's we, me. we know this. Yeah, yeah. Like so. We, we, we need to sort of try and, I don't want to say force some sort of thing, but there, there, I feel like there is a subtle undertone of anti-man with, with, the, with the group. I, don't, I may have been... Mis well, I mean, it's really difficult to have a men's right entitlement we, movement come and try and take all your rights away and for you not yeah, to take it... Yeah, but they're not men's it, rights. Not they're to, not men's yeah, rights. They're delusional. No, they're but delusional. it's a man's right. All, if you look at all the rights that women are contesting, it's men's rights to access women's spaces. It's, it's not. It's delusional men. men. No, but, they're delusional. Yeah, but they're still men now, aren't they? I know you don't But they're like, fucking mentally ill. Yeah, but... That's the thing. It's a men's thing. Is If that if the crazy men have a right to enter women's spaces, this is the thing. Other men will benefit because eventually... No, men, no, no, no guys going to do that. No, but there's enough <laughs> of them. <laughs> no, if you break down, if you break down safeguarding, you break down women's single sex spaces, then women won't have that space, and it does benefit men at the expense of women. So you really can't blame they're women not for men. taking they're it. They're not to men. Heart. They're not well, men. Well, they're you're, you're playing into it there by denying their manhood, no matter no, what I'm, you I'm do. No, I'm saying they are men, but there's a distinction. You have to make the distinction. What's the distinction? They, I'm autistic and I can see the nuance. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? They're not just men. They're mentally afflicted. They've either got a paraphilia yeah. or they've got some sort of weird delusion. Yeah. Normal men don't act like that. Normal I'm, men are the ones that are going to come put out the fire. I know, and unfortunately, stuff like that. though, like women. We can't rely on normal men because we make laws because of the bad men come. The bad men are a threat to us and women, we don't know who's good, who's bad, so we have to be a little bit cautionary. And it often feels like... If he wears a dress, he's probably not right. Well, I'm starting to feel that way now, like, you know. <laughs> uh, my, no, my rule is you can wear a dress just as long as it doesn't make your dick hard. That's it. Wear what you like, but if your dick's getting hard at the same time, I'm going to judge you, you dirty old man. Yeah. That's it at the end of the day. Yeah, blatantly. <laughs> it's quite simple, do you know what I mean? Like, back in the day, though, we had, like, David Bower, we had George, uh, Boy George, you know, like, we've got a long tradition in this country of, yeah, of see, gender a, fluidity. It was and a I long think march that's... through the institutions, though. This, was, this yeah, wasn't yeah. conceived overnight. This yeah. wasn't, do you know what I mean? It's been a long thought-out process, and we are, we are coming to... It's coming to the end point, isn't whoa, it? Yeah. Whoa. But no, I feel like we're a bit like Sco the Scooby Doo gang, you know what I mean? Like they would have got away for it if it wasn't for those yeah, nasty yeah, turfs, yeah, yeah, yeah. like pulling the mask off. Yeah. Because they weren't expecting this to ha kick off in England. And I think you've got a really in uh, interesting confluence of groups coming together in this country. And I think um, we, we might be in a good position to fight back against some of the worst excesses. Um, and I do think we'll come together. I just think it's going to take a little bit of good faith and work for all of us. Yeah. And a bit more, um, the more people see it, the more people see the systems that are coming down on them and the links between them, the more people will like work together and to find commonality and common cause. Um, and I think things like this are fabulous. You've had all these men coming down to speak to women, to listen to women, to hear what their, what their feelings are about this issue. 
um, and I think this is the way forward and this is how we're going to break through because we haven't got mass media campaigns, we haven't got all the propaganda techniques, we've got the truth, we've got authenticity and you can't buy that, you can't put a price on that Amen. and that's what they know so that's why they try so hard to shut down women's events and these events in particular because it's about normal women, maybe some of them have never spoke before in their whole life and they come here and they find the courage to stand up and say what they think about that's the world. That's a big thing to do as well, that yeah. is a, that's an admirable thing yeah, to, yeah. to have done. Yeah. Fair play to you, lot. Yeah. Thank you very right. much. Sorry, what's your name again? Jim. Jim, K. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, K. <laughs>